G'day, my name's John Barry. Welcome to another video tutorial about Adobe Premiere Pro CS 5.5. In this video tutorial, this is a workflow trick that I'm going to show you here. Um, thinking outside the box, how would we go about feathering on masks? Well, for starters, most people would probably be using something like the garbage mat. First thing we need to do is think outside the box. Now, what have I gone and done here? I'm using a track mat. And we can see when I select um, on this clip here, we're using the track mat key. And then it's got to do with, well, what is it that we're using as our track mat clip? What's the source? And how have we manipulated that in order to get it to work? So well, let's look at the feathered one over here. Um, basically, I'm using drop shadow. If I turn that off, then we get to see how sharp that is. And it's kind of nasty, really. But once we put this drop shadow, we've got quite a lot of control here. Um, and I'll just go ahead and show you how I built this from scratch. So let's have a look. We've got two clips here. Um, basically, they're exactly the same clip. I've got a very cold look, and then I've got quite a warm look. And what I want to do is get these two to blend, okay? But I want to get the feathering happening on the actual mask itself. Now, the title tool in this particular program, very, very powerful, not just for titles. I've gone and clicked on the new icon and selecting title. Okay, there's a couple different ways you can go about creating a new title, be it through the title, new title, the menu, default still. So let's go in and have a look. We've got a new title. We're going to call it uh, track map and we'll call it uh, feather. Right, good. So we've got this in here. We've got our nice little um, panels in here. We've got quite a lot of tools over here that a lot of people aren't even aware of or, or not quite sure exactly what they do. Well, let's have a quick look. We've got a selection tool, and then we've got the type tool. And in the type tool, we can go in and start creating some, you know, things like oh, my initials. Uh, let's give that a really fat sort of impact look there, uh, and we'll make it really big. Um, that's really good. I like that. And let's just make sure this is pure white. Okay. Um, I'm just going to make sure that that is actually 100% brightness in white. And uh, I'll explain in a minute why that is. So I can put that up there, and then we've got some other things here. We've got this pen tool. So the pen tool allows us to kind of draw whatever weird sort of shapes we want. Okay? And notice it's closed that shape, but it's not filled it. And that's because the graphic type is set to closed busier. So I'm going to put that on the filled busier, and we've got our shape right there. Really cool. And we've got some boxes, and we've got some other things with the rounded edges. We've got quite a lot of options here as far as what kind of things we can use, uh, and then rotate, and things like that, and kind of get some really cool customized sort of shapes and things going on here. Okay? Really, really cool. Great for isolating. If you want to isolate specific areas, you can just sort of build it up with a bunch of shapes or you can go and customize it with the pen tool. So what we've got here is um, quite a bit of a blob of things. And I'll just add it on top here. And let's have a look at what happens. So on the clip that we're going to use to have the track mat, we're just going to add that on. So we'll look it up in here, track mat key, add that to our clip. And then in here, we're going to make sure that our settings are set up correctly. I'm going to change this video track 3 name, rename it, and call it TM um, Feather, or Fed, Feather, that'll do. So now I've got TM Feather. I'm going to go in here and look at the mat, and what track are we going to use as our track mat? And I've already named TM Feather, and the name shows up. Really simple, quite straightforward. Now the difference between using the composite modes here, we've got Matt Alpha and Matt Luma. Now, if I set that to matte luma, um, it's using white and the grayscale. If we set it to alpha, then it's looking at what's going on as far as just what's opaque and what's transparent and what all the shades in between are. So if I was to, let's say, go in and change this matte to um, to be, uh, let's see, let's change this, this uh, particular thing in here to have uh, a shade of gray, okay? And then we'll just change that, turn that off. So now we know that's grey. And let's change our setting for alpha to luma. We can see that that square has kind of disappeared. And that's because on the luma scale, it's close to black, which means 
it's not going to be pulling through uh, detail through that. So there's not a lot of detail in there. Right? But as soon as we go to alpha, it doesn't matter what color it is. It's just got to do with the opacity level of it. So now you understand that concept, that's great. Now, how do we get this to feather? Simple. As I showed you before, we look up shadow and we just add shadow onto our track mat layer. And there's a couple of things I'm gonna do here. I'm just going to hit shadow only. And then I'm gonna make this opacity all the way up to 100%. Make my distance down to zero and then soften the edge. And that's it. That's as far as you need to go. And that softened things right up really nice. And you've got such control in here too. You can soften that right out. So that text, you can't even tell is text anymore, but really nice soft edges. And the best thing about this is you've got complete control. So I can open this um, title up and I can just start removing things that I know I don't need anymore. And I can see it update in this panel here. It's beautiful. I love it. So the effect with the shadowing, uh, getting that really feathered edge, I can see how it's affecting the rest of things here. So I'll get rid of this. Um, I even just, you know what, go in and start rebuilding it from scratch. Um, I might even just go over here and, okay, looking pretty good. Any questions? Well, I can't answer them through here, so go and put some comments in and we'll go through that way. My name's John Barry. Thanks for joining me. Ciao for now.